Welcome to Conversations with Zaki Baruti, with your host, Zaki Baruti. And like always, I want to give a shout out to my biological family. What's going on to the Universal African People's Organization? What's happening into the New Life Evangelistic Center here by Reverend Rice? Keep up the great work, and as well as a shout out to my cameraman, Bob. On that note, we're going to have another great show this evening. And in, st in studio with me is a young lady who has been an activist and community organizer for a number of years, and that's Miss Erica Brooks. Uh, welcome to Conversations with Zaki Baruti. How are you doing this evening? I'm, I'm doing okay. I thank you for having me on your show. Okay, thank then. You. Erica, uh, before uh, we get into the details of uh, your latest mission in terms of making change in our community, uh, I always like for my audience to know a little bit about the person I'm interviewing. So share with us your background, you know, wherever you want folks to know of Erica Brooks. Well, uh, basically, uh, like I said, my name is Erica M. Brooks. I, for a living, I do freelance media photography. Uh, I also do all kinds of community service work. Uh, and I try to make sure that there's not just a photo op, but an opportunity to create peace and justice for all. And so I've come to that point when it came to me being a Ferguson, a resident, a resident of uh, Ferguson, Missouri, and finding out from Metro Reimagine that our bus route was going to be cut, and our bus route is in the heart of Ferguson, Missouri, goes right through the, the I mean, the huge part of our community to be able to access uh, public transportation where it's convenient, affordable, and safe. And so this led me to uh, go out on a journey and on a campaign to keep our bus route because our, our city leaders hadn't informed us and it was just a moment of, it was a spirit jerking situation where I couldn't imagine us as a community not having access to public transportation. Okay, and within, uh, you're giving us a little background, uh, just for our clarity's sake, uh, you also uh, are a photographer, am I right? And, right, uh, you photojournalist, do yes. A photo... Journalist. Journalist, yes, okay, thank mm -hmm. you for the correction. Uh, so how long have you been doing that? Well, I've been in media since uh, 1990, and I began my career over in East St. Louis with uh, Gloria Jackson, who's uh, not with us anymore, and also Willie Walker, who, who did... Uh, videography work and throughout the community and later on in 2007 I did my internship at the St. Louis American. I've also done various works with the East St. Louis Monitor, St. Louis Argus newspaper, St. Louis Sentinel, uh, other uh, magazines and uh, I, I so you've been, in essence you've been, a, 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 you've been in the community on the front lines uh, documentary, uh, documentary. Uh, a whole lot of social activity and uh, people speaking out on a, a wide range of issues. Is that exactly? And I was also the photographer for the former Mayor East St. Louis, uh, Mayor Alvin Parks, as well as Mayor Gordon Bush, uh, as well as uh, campaign photographer for Louis Reed when he ran for mayor, and uh, so different organizations throughout the Metro East area. Okay, then. And also your organization as well, too. <laughs> right, right. So yeah. on that note, now that's the. Uh, yeah, Right off, you jumped into a situation that you're involved in uh, in Ferguson. First of all, how long have you been a resident of Ferguson? Ten years. Ten years? Mm -hmm. So you were uh, living in Ferguson at the height of the Ferguson uprisings. Oh, my gosh, yes. You know, I, I, it was a situation where not only was I living there, I was covering uh, Mike Brown's situation 24 hours a day. Whenever I could wake up and get out there, I, I had my kids out there so they can actually understand the history of it and not read something that might not have been their story. Um, I was out there volunteering at my son's school, which is two blocks away from the police station on, on South Florissant. And then also, uh, like just like being a resident, not knowing when it was going to come my way. So, I, it, I mean, I had fr first uh, frontline information right there next to the police and tear uh, gas and everything. So. Right. on the uh, and, uh, and, and this is the fifth year of uh, the murder of Mike Brown and, uh, and the uprisings. Any reflections on that before we get into what you're doing now? Well, the, the way that it really touches me internally is not having organization in our city. Our city leaders not uh, making us aware of the trauma and the turmoil that we were about to encounter, not having access to public transportation. So uh, when I think about all the different uh, opportunities that we did not have at that moment, moment in 2014, uh, like, like not having justice, not having uh, people in the community not being listened to, people being profiled, 
uh, I was profiled uh, before that outbreak happened in 2013, but I, I didn't even know I was being profiled until I started hearing about other people being pulled over for an un unreasonable situation, you know. Um, like I said, all the different things that were happening where tear gas was being shot, bullets being, you know, shot. Uh, it was just so many different things that uh, it was traumatizing for me, and it's still traumatizing thinking about the uh, uh, unawareness of when this is going to break out again because people don't have access to what they need, like right so, now. So, so, and then we're going to flip to the subject. So have there been improvement in Ferguson since that time as you see it or well, any reforms? Or when not? it comes to this situation that I'm dealing with right now, when it comes to our city listening to us, uh, reflecting justice for us as a community, no. Because it took them 106 days to send a letter, a, a conjoint letter as a mayor and city council members to say, hey, we want to support our, our community and have access to public transportation. So when it comes to justice, no. I mean, I... I, I'm not an elected official. I'm a resident that's concerned. And I happen to have to have dive head first into this situation because they haven't stood up for us to say, Metro, please keep our bus route for our community in our community. Okay, then. And you keep uh, highlighting, uh, and I know that's real dear to your heart, <laughs> <laughs> in terms of uh, public transportation, access to public transportation. So let's uh, uh, get into exactly the cause you're fighting right now, and that's around public transportation. So mm -hmm. obviously um, you got involved in uh, this case because you did not have a, I mean, you have to use public transportation. Am I yes. correct? Yes. All right. Now for our audience, so there's clarity. What is the issue that got you into that whole struggle for change for public uh, transportation in Ferguson? But before we do that, we're going to have to take a quick break. The oceans of God's love is ready to spill over you. Where there may be ugliness, bitterness, hostility, the beauty of His holiness can spring forth. Experience the invitation to come and be a part of creation at this moment. Breathe in God's goodness and freshness and love and exhale all that anxiety, that stress, that bitterness. We may be getting older, but we can get better, not bitter. We can experience the healing of our souls at this moment as we take God's prescription and invitation to come and behold the beauty of His works, experiencing healing for our soul. Let your blood pressure go down. Let worry be gone. Exhale all that fear and frustration and inhale the beauty of God's creation. Come and join me in creation at this moment. Let's experience the healing for our souls been provided by Christ who holds all things together. As Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 says, let's experience the healing and the beauty of God's creation. How important are St. Louis Metro passes to the needy? These bus tickets help me get to my pregnancy class, my daughter to see her, um, look for work. And I'm really thankful for them. Thank you. To provide stability and permanent change to the homeless, they need jobs. But how do they get transportation to look for work when they have no money? And when they find a job, how will they get there? Become a part of NLEC's Metro Pass program and help bring enduring change to a life. Bus tickets may not sound like a big thing to some people, but when you have no transportation and you're working with a very limited budget, these bus tickets are a tremendous blessing. I have doctor's appointments that I have to attend, uh, going to seek jobs and putting in applications. I really would like you to understand the importance and the need for this ministry. And anything that you can do to keep this ministry going, please know that it is an extension of God's love. And you're also getting some bus tickets, is yes. that right? Yes. It helps out walking because everywhere you go, it's like a few hours each way and people don't understand. It's freezing out there. We might have coats and everything, but it doesn't help out as much as everyone thinks they do. So getting the bus tickets are a big help for yes, you. Yes, very much help. And I say thank you to all of you that are praying, caring, and sharing at this time so we can help so many. Welcome back to Conversations with Zaiki Baruti, with your host Zaiki, and uh, in studio with me is Ms. Erica Brooks, a com local community organizer living in the city of Ferguson. And uh, we are now going to delve into her passion at this moment as relates to public transportation. 
because public transportation is your means of being able to get about in the St. Louis metropolitan area. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay, then. Now, what has led you to embark upon a campaign to actually save a bus line, right? Right. And right. Explain, explain the situation. Well, uh, on March 9th of this year, 2019, I was on my Facebook page and an announcement popped up on my page saying that bus route 79 between Suburban Day was going to be discontinued. So I'm like, what, what are they talking about? I mean, that's my bus route. I've walked two blocks now. Without that, I've been walking a whole mile. So uh, from there, I started to go on to Metro Reimagine's page. And what out. is Metro Imagine? Metro Reimagine is a uh, reconstruction of the bus system here in the St. Louis region, which is in the city and in the county, where they're saying that, you know, they, they have to consolidate some bus routes in order to make it more efficient. They, they said it's going to be shorter weights, better connections, and, and, and uh, uh, faster uh, uh, tr travel. But see, none of this So, happening. wait a minute. So, I just want to paint the picture for the people. Okay, then. So, the this is the St. Louis metropolitan area. Bus Busing. I mean, what's the name of the agency that's doing it's, that? By State is the agency, and they have a project by, called Metro Reimagine. Okay, By State. Okay, is the By State busing the mass transit system? Oh, here mass in the transit system. Okay, yes. and then in that process mm -hmm. of uh, supposedly uh, consolidating uh, different bus routes and what have you. One of those bus routes was the bus route that you have been using. Yeah, Is bus, that correct? bus number 79, yes. Bus number 79, okay then. On Suburban and Dade, yes. So when you found out that they were being disconnected or they were going to close it down. Uh -huh. So you have began a series of process to counter that move, right? Right. Now, that's ABC, those processes. What was the first thing that you had done? And this would be a good example for people who may be dissatisfied with some type of lack of social service that you have shown firsthand what you need to do. And what was your first step in responding to that crisis that you were facing? My first step was to do homework. You know, who this, who's doing this? You know, why are they doing this? Who's going to be affected? How are they going to be affected? And doing all kind of research, going to their website to see, well, what is this supposed to offer us? If they're going to discontinue my route, what is it going to offer me? And I didn't see anything that was being offered to me according to their slogan, uh, faster trips, shorter waits, and better connections. I didn't see that because I had to walk a mile versus two blocks. Once I got there, my transfer would have been out. I would have been paying so more. So in your research, you found out that, that the new route would have been even greater hardship upon yourself. Uh, economic hardship, physical hardship, not only me, but a lot of people in the area have students in that neighborhood. We have a whole lot of elderly in that neighborhood. And so I, well, once I found out, did the research on all the different partners and projects and how they're looking at uh, benefiting from taking my bus route, having access to affordable and uh, safe bus route, um, I went on to form a petition where I got in contact with Mr. Bernie Hayes, who's one of the ho uh, hosts on, uh, at the New, uh, New Life, Life Evangelist Center. Center that allowed me to be on his show. Uh, and... Uh, I asked him, how do I get, I want to start a petition. So how do we do that? So he connected me with Mr. Green, Mr. Percy Green, second. And uh, from there, he helped me to structure the wordage that I had to do in order to form a petition. And I had um, 392 people to sign that petition. And, and so close to 392 people were utilizing the service. Well, no, not utilizing the service, but saying, hey, we want to keep our bus route. Okay. And so after, while I was doing that petition, I was also reaching out to different city leaders on a federal level, a state level, a local level, saying, hey, we need your voice because our city, after trying to go to them on March the 12th and say, hey, why didn't you all notify us of this situation, uh, they, the city manager sat down with me and said, well, first of all, I empathize with Metro. And I'm like, there's no way as a city leader that you're going to tell me that you empathize with somebody that's taking, uh, uh, revoking our right to public transportation. So... And sitting down and talking about a date to have a, a feedback meeting because we didn't have one out in Ferguson. So we sat down. He agreed upon a date, which was uh, May the 18th, 2019, on a Saturday at the Ferguson Community Center. And I did the promotion of it, walking throughout the community, pounding the pavement every day, um, knocking on doors, giving out information on, on bus routes, uh, riding on every bus route in North County to just ask the community, do you know about this? You know, and uh, it was maybe, I would say, one or two fingers of people that could tell me they knew anything about it. 
So after doing all that, I also had a bus driver that, that tried to get me arrested on there just for notifying people about the different changes because she didn't want me to on there on her bus talking about it. And it ended up that I didn't get arrested, but I was told by the supervisor, other supervisor, hey, find a different platform to notify people about what they're doing to us. And so, uh, it so you went, just took it to the where people are, are using the service, exactly. and they didn't want you to do that. that no, wow. No. So, so then, not only that, when we had the actual form itself, the city manager, you know, I had asked you to be on our panel to speak because you know I had asked the super, the city manager, if they could be the moderator. He said, No, no, that's okay. I said, What, what about the mayor? Is he gonna be there? He said, Well, I don't know his schedule. So he, I, I said, Okay, well, I'll, I'll fix that. out. I, I made it panel out. I had you as one of the panelists. I had the Honorable uh, Betty Thompson that was going to be there. I had the state, uh, one of the representatives for the bus drivers, union reps, that was going to be there to speak about that before the bus riders. The city had invited uh, Metro Rear Manager Jessica Milford Miller there, and also Mr. Bernie Hayes was going to be the the, uh, the moderator. So everybody's voice would have been heard, but the city manager said that that's a conflict. We don't want that. We want just Metro to explain, and explain in the meaning that he wanted us as uh, citizens to show up, not say nothing, and just go by a scripted uh, form like everything else that goes out. Or in, 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 well, did you follow that? Uh, well, guess what? The people spoke up. They wanted to know. They had questions. They wanted answers, particular ones, and they tried to shut them. I, my ward members, uh, 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 Tony Burrow as well as uh, Heather Robinette were there. As, I mean, some other ones, council members were there too, but Tony Robinette, I mean, Tony Burrow tried to confuse the people. You saw her, she tried to confuse people saying to Metro, did you say that 79 wasn't gonna start running? I said, yes, it's gonna start running between suburban day where we live at, which is what I brought to you all. Okay then, all right, uh, on that note, we'll have to take another break. I wanna thank God for each and every one of you that are supporting NLEC TV the work of the New Life Evangelistic Center and making it all possible so we can have conversations with Saki on the air along with the other programming that's on NLEC TV. Not only we discover that at 24.2, but I actually watch it on my cell phone at a very special app that we have of NLEC TV and you can just pull it up. It's so easy that everybody can watch it anywhere. So wherever I travel, I can be watching this program and other programs. Now all this is possible only because of caring people like you that are sharing those much needed tax deductible gifts at this time with the New Life Evangelistic Center. We have a lot of things that are unfolding at this moment. We're continuing to help multitudes of people, not only throughout mid-America, but as far away as India and Africa and other locations around the world. And we really do need your help. After they closed down 1411 Locust, we're continuing to help the homeless directly out on the streets every week. We're out in the mayor's window distributing bus tickets and other direct supplies. We have regular events out in front of 1411 Locust. And we're working actually through the legal, the mediation, the advocacy, and getting prayer warriors to pray that we can reopen 1411 Locust in the near future. But we need your involvement at this particular moment. And your gifts to the New Life Evangelistic Center make such a big difference. You can send that to P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. Or you can give online through the PayPal system at newlifeevangelisticcenter.org or NLECSTL. I ask you to continue to stand with us right now as we continue to bring many programs like Conversation with Saki to you, but we need your help. Welcome back to Conversations with Zaki Baruti. In the studio with me is uh, Erica Brooks, a community organizer and uh, has a passionate desire to save 
uh, public transportation that she has to utilize uh, for a particular route. Bus route, route 79. Bus route 79. Yeah, okay. So they had uh, this gathering in Ferguson with representatives from by state uh, explaining the whole concept of why they're consolidating. Was, bottom line, was there any concrete action after you had mobilized the people uh, to save uh, Route uh, 79, Bus Route 79, were you able to be successful? Okay, now in that forum, my mother stood up because in the, from their perspective, they were saying, no, we're not going to keep it there. She said, why not alternate between Suburban Dade and South Florida? So that became part of a survey that I also administered through the help of a state rep. She actually composed the, the survey, and I went out and executed the survey by getting the, the uh, signatures. And this survey, State again, route. is trying to, from the people, what is the best routes. Is that what, right? Yes. This is like my shirt here is showing that basically um, option three is what they asked for, and it was 350 people said, yes, we want to do option three. Out of three, uh, well, 340 people said yes for option three out of 350 total. And so... After going and that to Barry's, included saving bus routes? 79 uh, between okay. Suburban and Dade and alternating on South Florissant. Okay. Now, after going through all these uh, bi-state uh, meetings and county meetings and city council meetings. So on that note, too, I mean, this is a lesson for the people. So in your passion, you made you had to make a lot of public meetings. Yes. So you had you didn't just stay in the house. You went out and actively I, engaged. I went through, you know, my, my perspective was this. My perspective was not just getting signatures, it was getting signatures of the people in the community that were business owners that we had to patronize in order to be, be able to, we had to first have public transportation to get there. And if we didn't have public transportation to get to those different places, then they wouldn't, we wouldn't have business, we wouldn't have revenue in Ferguson. And, and Ferguson, I was looking at a municipality chart yesterday, it's the biggest municipality in a different municipality throughout the St. Louis County. So if we didn't have transportation to get to those places to, to patronize them, we wouldn't have any economy flowing through Ferguson. Mm -hmm. So when it came down to it, uh, going through all those meetings, this last meeting on June 28th, uh, President Tony Roach had specifically told Jessica Milfamilia, who was a And Tony Roach is the president, president of Bi-State. Bi -State, yes. Okay. He, uh, after presenting my last presentation at their uh, final, uh, present my presentation at their final um, update for Metro Imagine, he stopped and said, Miss Milford, can you tell Ms. Brooks what we're going to do with our route? Because I said, I've done all I can do. I've done your surveys that you want me to do. I've done a petition. The people have spoken. They want option three. He said, Miss Jessica Milford Miller, it's, it's, it's on my Facebook page under Erica and Brooks. She said, we're going to keep bus route, your bus route between suburban and Dade, and it's not going to be affected. Okay, then. So... That's a community victory then. That was a victory, yes it yeah, was. Well, yes. I want to just clap you, you know, and that uh, as an example, again, to people with passion as well as working with other people, if there's an issue that you uh, know need to be addressed, then you got to get up and do something about it, and that's what, exactly what you have done. Now, since they, you know, a lot of times uh, officials uh, say they don't do something, and then a lot of times they flip the script. Has mm -hmm. there been any flipping the script uh, uh, since uh, Mr. Roach uh, asked of uh, the lady to assure you that uh, bus to bus yes. Yeah. So, so today is July 11th, and then we, I'm, I'm out. Now, this is a taping of our show on July 11th. This yes. is a tape show, okay. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm looking for my bus route to come, I'm trying to find out what time it's coming. I look on it, and it says uh, rider alert. The rider alert said that, uh, there's going to be some, uh, my bus route 79 was going to be removed and relocated to North Florissant and Lakeview. And, and so I'm like, okay, that's not the route that they openly said on 28th of June. That's so on happened. June 28th, they made a public statement. At their board meeting. At the board state, meeting, by mm -hmm. state port board meeting, that they were going to keep, keep your route. 79 between suburban and Dade. So that's again June 28th. Yes. And today, as we tape the show, July the 11th, 11th mm -hmm. uh, look like there may be some changes. So we're going to have to have a second episode and have you back to see what has happened after you have investigated uh, why they may be changing. Am I correct? Yes. <laughs> okay, then. On that note, we'll uh, take our last break. I hope you're enjoying the Zaki Baruti Show, and I thank God for each one of you that are praying and working with us to get back into the 1411 Locust Building, one of the greatest acts of discrimination in modern history, as we see a five-story facility shut down 
because neighbors didn't want to see those kind of people in the neighborhood as they referred to them at. Those kind of people as they referred to them at are actually individuals that are made in the image of God who Jesus said, as often you've done to the least of these, he said, even so you've done it unto me. As you share a gift of $10 or more with the New Life Evangelistic Center, you're not only helping New Life Evangelistic Center to get back into 1411 Locust Street, but you're helping so many of the hurting and the homeless in so many different ways. And as you share your gift, please request your copy of Through the Fire. It tells you the whole story of steps that were taken by the rich and powerful to shut down 1411 Locust. Now we're working to get back in there, and it will happen as you pray, as you get directly involved. So as you share your gift, be sure you ask for a copy of Through the Fire, and know that by giving, caring, and sharing at this time, you're helping so many people that are in need. Thanks to New Life Evangelistic Center, thousands of mothers with children around the world can stay together. They can pursue their educations and they grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you to all of our Club 24 members who make this miracle happen. Now you can take NLEC TV anywhere as you put the NLEC TV app on your iPhone or mobile device. NLEC TV is an innovative TV station that's on the cutting edge of community service. On NLAC TV, you'll discover wholesome family, community, renewable energy, and inspirational programming. Those needing energy assistance, food, clothing, or freedom from the cycle of homelessness will find that plus much more on NLAC TV. Now, you can receive NLAC TV by going to 24.2 on your television set or putting the NLAC TV app on your iPhone or mobile device. For further information, call 314-436-2424 or go to NLAC STL. Dot org. That's NLECSTL.org. Welcome back to Conversations with Zaki Baruti. And uh, we just have a couple more minutes left uh, with Miss Erica Brooks. And uh, on the other side, we were I was complimenting you for the victory, but then sometimes victories are short-lived because some the people in power sometimes say, damn, what we agreed upon, and uh, we're going to do what we want to do, regardless of the feelings of the people. Mm -hmm. Is that a correct assessment? Well, that's, that's what they did. I mean, they, they publicly uh, lied, you know. So when it comes to people understanding uh, a person's word, and, and you're talking about from the top, we're not talking about from their receptionist or somebody else. We're talking about the president of Bi State as well as the executive director for the mass transit system and, and the uh, executive director for Metro Reimagined. So um, we're going to keep pushing because we need access to affordable, safe, and convenient transportation. And I live in Ferguson, like I said, two blocks right now. And without that, we, students are going to be without a bus route, parents, uh, dis physically disabled, elderly. And right now, if you look at our bus, our, our school system, they restructured it. So you have a whole lot of different school systems that the parents are going to have to take their kids to because they have K through 2, 3 through 5, 6 through 8, and uh, you mean uh, different uh, school locations. Different locations. So oh, your parents okay. are going to have to use a whole lot more that if they take the bus, a whole lot more of the public transportation to get around. Now, if anybody wanted to help you mm -hmm. in your struggle for, we don't say justice around public uh, transportation, how would they get in contact with you? Well, my phone number is 314-243-2805. That's 314 Two four three two eight zero five. My email address is e r i m o n number two at yahoo dot com. E r i m o n two at yahoo dot com. And my Facebook page is Erica M Brooks. And if you don't put the M in there, you won't get me. So it's Erica M Brooks. And you can see the campaign that I've pursued in order to keep our bus route. Okay, then, you know, again, I want to just salute you and uh, just encourage you to uh, keep doing what you're doing. And I want to uh, thank you, too. I'm sorry, because you did come out there and support us at Suburban Data. I thank you for your help as well. Okay, then. Uh, and on behalf of the UAPO, of course, uh, that's what we're all about, helping the people. And uh, you just stay strong in that process, and uh, we'll have you on at some time in the future to see what was the second stage of your battle for uh, public transportation. On that note, of course, we encourage everybody to join a progressive organization, join the Universal African People's Organization, go to www.uapo.org. On that note, uh, may God bless each and every one of you. And again, thank you, Erica. Thank you.